So this is the Pine Phone by Pi64 running Manjaro Plasma. Uh, specifically, this is the fifth beta version going forward. And Plasma, this Manjaro ARM Plasma, is going to be the official uh, Linux distribution or interface for the Pine phones going forward. So in this video, what we're going to do is go ahead and just do a quick system overview and run through. I'm going to talk about some of my experiences with the Pine phone. Uh, right now, I'm kind of running experiments off and on using this as a daily driver uh, when I'm not going somewhere far and I need to be able to use like Google Maps or something like that. But to, to summarize that, overall it's been a little bit challenging but definitely doable with a little bit of willpower. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on into this overview. Alright, so we are now booted into the Pine Phone. We're going to go ahead and run through the system real quick. And the first thing we're going to check out here is our notifications and settings over here. So if I go ahead and pull that down, you can see I recently taken a screenshot. That is the only notification I have right now. But whenever you get any updates, text messages, anything, those are going to appear here. Uh, I can hit this little X to theoretically get rid of it. Sometimes it does and doesn't work. And right here I have a little arrow that I could go ahead and pull down to access more settings. Here we have little toggles like settings, which will just take you to your settings. But then we have uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data, battery sound, flashlight. The flashlight actually does work. Depending on the distribution that you're using, that is a hit or miss, but it does work on this Manjaro arm. Uh, we have location, which that is another hit or miss, including on Manjaro. Sometimes the uh, GPS sensors don't work very well. We have screenshot there, so you go ahead and take a screenshot through here. Auto rotate I have disabled because this is my second take recording this and I was uh, demonstrating rotations and it completely glitched out the phone and I needed to restart. So auto rotate definitely works, but for recording, I'm just going to keep it vertical for now. Uh, we have night color and this is really cool. If I go ahead and toggle this, you'll see a little bit of glitchiness, but you do, do see that it does change to warmer colors, which are as better on the eyes if you're using this at night. We do have do not disturb there if you'd like to select that. I'll go ahead and check it for this video. You do see we have more options such as one hour, four hours uh, until the morning, etc. We'll just say an hour for now and then it will tell you when your do not disturbed ends. So now on our home screen, the first thing you're probably going to notice is this little search bar up here. This isn't an online search tool. It's going to go ahead and search the contents of your phone. So if I searched phone, for example, and hit search it's going to go ahead and pull anything on the device that will have that and for me this is a new install so it's going to have phone and phone book uh, example if i go ahead and open up this phone application you can kind of see what it looks like there i don't have my sim card in here at the moment but i did use it for about four or five days as my primary device and it does uh, receive and send phone calls very well uh, texting is kind of a different story uh, you can see it just went dark on me and I didn't change any settings. I'm not sure if there's an auto sensing thing, but it always tries to throw it to halfway. Uh, if I go ahead and go into all my applications, and I believe the texting application is right here. And you can see on this install, I don't have any chats. Now texting usually works okay, but sometimes when it comes to receiving messages, uh, I won't receive them until I restart my phone, so that is definitely a huge issue and one of the reasons why I can't really use this as a daily driver quite yet. Another thing is definitely the uh, picture messages. You cannot send or receive picture messages as of yet, so there are definitely some cons when it comes to using this. Now if I go ahead and swipe up, we can see some of the other applications here. We do have a basic calculator, which does work perfectly fine. Out of anything on here, this is definitely one of the applications that works the best. Uh, you get correct answers, you're good to go. And one thing that you're probably noticing is to go to the home page, I'm hitting this middle button. And I did mention that this is a fairly low spec device and you do want to be careful doing that because if I go ahead and open this up, you could see everything that I was doing is still open in the multitask view. And that's really going to bog down your phone. I notice for like if I want to do something like go on YouTube for example and watch videos, I can't have anything else in the background otherwise the video will stutter. And speaking of YouTube, the uh, web browser is up here on the top, it is called Angelfish. 
I'm going to go ahead and give that an open real quick and show you guys how this works. So you can see the last thing I did on here was actually view a YouTube video. This is one of my recent uploads. I'll put a little eye up there in the corner if you want to go ahead and check it out. But it does play fairly well. And this is the audio. I'm going to turn this down a bit. Mate. Now, Ubuntu Mate is just one of the many flavors of Ubuntu. This one obviously uses the Mate desktop. If you're not familiar with Mate... So that was YouTube running and you were able to hear some of that video quality as well. It doesn't sound too bad, it's definitely a little uh, tin canny, but as far as video playback, it's pretty good. If I go up here into the settings, you can see it's auto at 240p. Uh, let's say if I bumped it up to something like 720, let's see if it even lets me do that. And as far as actual web pages go, let's go ahead and go to techhut.tv. This is a very simple WordPress website. So you can kind of see how long it takes to load and get to that website. You can see it wasn't too long and it is pretty smooth because this is a lighter website. Uh, the scrolling is pretty smooth. You could go through. I could go ahead and open up a page for example. And it does take longer than most things but you can see that was fairly quick, fairly responsive for just light web browsing. This honestly is a really good device. So, like I said, instead of, if you are using one of these, instead of getting the habit of uh, just going to the home screen, open up your multitask and close that out, that's going to be your best bet. Now, one thing I want to show you guys is the camera. The camera is absolutely horrible, and <laughs> you'll see what I mean. Uh, it might be on me. Nope, it's not, but you can see, one, the, uh, how the, <laughs> the frames per second when it comes to just picking up stuff. Um, I'll put some pictures that I took on the screen. What I'm going to do now is flip around the camera so you're going to see me and my camera for a moment. Here we are. Uh, it's very green for some reason and you can kind of see the uh, delay in I'm talking. I'm going to smile and take a picture real quick and put it up on screen. It's loading right there. I think it might have taken but the camera is, is is not that great. Like I would compare this like back in like 2006 I had one of those uh, little cricket phones that you can slide and flip the keyboard up it about had the same camera as this pine phone <laughs> I know it's not really a uh, pine phone overview but I just wanted to show that <laughs> it's kind of funny um, if we go over to we saw phone uh, we have P sensor in here which is really cool because uh, a lot of the times this is a tinkerer's toy this is not yet to be used as a daily driver in my opinion and this is good if you're doing some serious stuff on it and you want to make sure you don't uh, thermal throttle your device. That's a good thing to have. Now I'm not going to open up every single one of these applications, but like uh, Index for example, this is your file system. Uh, some of these applications do take a little bit of time to open up, but this is ultimately a full Linux system. So when this does open up, I'll be able to show you the full, the fact as a full file system. So here in my home folder, you can see I'm under my username and you have all the typical things you'd expect, but you can also go ahead and go to your root directory and have access to like your bin, user, sbin, everything that you'd want to be able to play around with in a normal Linux system. You have a bunch of different applications that I'm not going to really get into, such as Congress. Uh, you have the Ktrip utility, which is good for like planning trips and things like that. Uh, you have the PDF viewer, NeoChat, Phonebook, Recorder, and we'll actually go ahead and record something and then I'll go ahead and play back the audio. So let's open up this Recorder application so you can guys can kind of hear the microphone quality if I'm able to actually get it from this to the computer, which shouldn't really be a problem. All right, so when I actually hit record, I'm just going to overlay with the audio on here so you will be hearing audio from this. Alright, so you are now listening to audio from the Pine Phone microphone. This is currently audio from the Pine Phone microphone. Alright, so now we see we have the clip. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And it didn't really give me any feedback or anything as if I was actually recording. It says no recordings yet. So we're going to see if that actually worked. Uh, if I had the audio up, it worked. But I'm going to close this out for now. And what we're going to do is go into our terminal and then we're going to finish off in settings. So we have our terminal application here. This is a full Linux terminal 
You could do just about everything in here. I used this to uh, fully update the system a little bit ago and install NeoFetch because we can't do a distro video without at least throwing up NeoFetch at least once. Now it is cut off a little bit, but you can see it is currently running Manjaro ARM on the Pine 64 with the 5.12 kernel running Plasma 5.22 and it is currently running the Bash shell. So you have your full terminal, you can do it, use it for anything you'd use a terminal for, such as SSHing into other devices, uh, really whatever you want. So before I go to settings, let's, let's check out this weather application. I haven't set it up so we could kind of go through that setup process together. So this is K weather. Let's just continue through here, finish, add current location. And it's probably going to try to pull my current location. Let's, uh, let's make sure that's turned on to see if this is going to work. So after some playing, it looks like the GPS sensor actually worked and was able to pull my current location, but it is uh, rather warm here. Not as warm as it's been, but you can see this weather application works pretty good and we got nice little animation over there. If I hit this, we have access to our forecast locations and settings. So a lot of the applications are working fairly well. Uh, last thing, we're going to go into our settings, and this is just kind of a stripped down KDE Plasma settings. So here it is loading up. We have accounts, so you can configure your online accounts. You have your audio stuff, Bluetooth, cellular networks, colors, so you can change the color scheme. So let's see if we can switch this up to a dark color scheme. So right here we're using the breeze high contrast, but let's switch this up to... Uh, let's go with breeze dark here. So let's go with this one actually let's See if that actually changes it might not change in my settings menu right away So what I'll do is go ahead and close this out and restart the application to see if I have those dark settings or the dark UI in general which I do so you can see the Actual theming is working. Okay. We have displays to manage your monitors if you do have the little uh Thing that came with the Pi to plug in HDMI, not the Pi, this uh, Pine phone, the little dock to plug in HDMI in. This is a very handy tool and you can plug this into an external monitor, basically use it as a computer. Uh, but let's go ahead and go into our settings again. And over here we have fonts, hotspot, hotspot currently does not work, at least on this phone at the moment. We could change around to our icons, see our information, which we already kind of saw in NeoFetch. We have some of our night color settings, which we saw earlier. Uh, not the settings, but that was the uh, actual toggle. This will let you go ahead and change it, and you can set up the uh, activation times, things like that. So now if I go back, uh, we can set up our lock screen pin, which is actually your user password as well. So you're going to want to set your user password to numbers. Uh, we have our plasma style, screens, lock screen. So we can configure screen locking, so hopefully we can... Uh, change some of these settings around because it does seem to uh, shut down pretty quick. Uh, five minutes, that's incorrect. It's much quicker than that. Uh, time and date, virtual keyboard, so you could go ahead and configure this keyboard that comes up. And then you had your Wi-Fi settings and much more. So this is the Pine Phone. This was our quick little overview. There's really not much to it quite yet, but definitely the progression of this Manjaro Plasma, which is the new default operating system for the Pine phones. You see I got the uh, Mobian version. This came with a Mobian pre-installed. But this Manjaro Plasma is going to be what the Pine 64 team goes with continuing forward. And I am looking forward to the future development. Now one of the things I really didn't cover in this video that I noticed after the fact is I haven't really opened up the App Store. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, if I go over it, this is like a list of all of the different applications you could go ahead and get. Uh, with this, it's really hit or miss. Some of them work, some of them don't work. Basically, to have an application run good on this phone, it has to not use that much system resources. It has to be able to work with the ARM architecture. And it's uh, really nice when it's actually optimized for smaller screens like this. Those three things together make a good app, and unfortunately, there are not very many applications at the moment. There are some good ones, uh, Potter, I think is what it's called, is a good podcast application. There's good alternatives for a, a Twitter client, things like that, but the apps really aren't there as far as availability, and actually being able to use them successfully, like I've ran Kate successfully, HTOP works, you saw me running uh, 
Neo Fetch and that worked, even though that's not really a useful application. You can definitely get a lot of different Linux things on this. It's just a matter or not if they are optimized for the screen and they run off of that architecture. So with all that said, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. It was definitely fun making, and I do like making these pine phone type videos. So if you did like it, please let me know down in the comments below or by simply liking this video. Uh, do subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Speaking of the ARM architecture, I have a really exciting video coming up in regards to Jing OS and the Jing pad. So do make sure you're subscribed to see that video. And with all that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.